Hi everyone, this is Yan Xiaxie. Thanks SOC for giving me this opportunity to present my work in this conference. I'm going to talk about the pH properties in low redshift quasars. Our universe started from Big Bang about 13 billion years ago after the dark ages and cooling process during the inflation. The first generation stars and galaxies began to form at cosmic dawn. Stars form in the dense molecular clouds. This process includes metaflows of different time and spatial scales, as well as ionization stages. The left image shows the central region of nebulae of Orion, seen by speeds arc at eight micron, which primarily captures dust and gas emissions. The early ISO spectrum towards the Orion bar PDR region reveals rich dust and gas features, including the molecular and atomic hydrogen, ionized gases, dust containing emission of different green sizes, and aromatic infrared bands, or also known as PAHs whose emission can account for 10 to 20% of total infrared energy for star formings. PHs are large molecules or ultra small carbon dust grains. The basic structure of PH is benzene ring associated with different atom atoms and carbon hydrogen chains. They can absorb and scatter UV photons from star formation process and re radiate in the infrared. Therefore, they are regarded as optimal star formation ray tracer for star forming galaxies or starbursts. Given their bright emission at 8 micron, the pH emission is also used to select high redshift galaxies at the cosmic noon with current and future. Uh, facilities. The pH ratio of different bands are constrained by the balance between the pH ionization fraction and green size distribution. Therefore, the combination of different pH ratios can trace the physical parameters of the interstellar dust. Despite that pH has potential implementation in galaxies, but the apl application in the AGNs are questionable because when AGN turns on, it can contribute heavily to the entire SED extended from the X-ray always to the radio band. The pH emissions can be affected by radiation from black hole accretion through different factors, including the AGN, AGN torus dilution effect and the pH molecules destruction by X-ray photons or shock process. The star formation in the host galaxies that produce photons to excite pH molecules, as well as the gas reservoir of and dust in the host galaxies. The spatially resolved study to the local seabirds indicates that the equivalent weight of pH at 11.3 micron reaches minimum at the nuclei, but their absolute flux is enhanced. The early work regarded that the dust towers plays a major role to dilute the pH equivalent weight, and rather than the pH molecules destruction. So they conclude that the torus media can shield pH molecules in the central regime, and the pH at 11.3 micron is a robust star formation rate indicator. The 11.3 micron feature is mainly from the large and neutron pH grains, while the 7.7 micron emission is mostly produced by small and ionized pHs. The spatially resolved study to 35 local seabirds indicate the small and ionized pH grains is preferentially suppressed in the seabird nuclei to the neutron at large pHs. Therefore, they conclude 
for low luminosity AGNs, pH feature at 11.3 micron is a better star formation tracer than the short wavelength pH features. However, this conclusion is challenged when more AGMs with higher luminosity are entered into the analysis. The month 2012 find, besides the reduced equivalent width, the global emission of PAH at 11.3 is truly suppressed with respect to PAH at 17 micron. Therefore, they conclude and argue that pH molecules that responsible for the 11.3 micron feature is also affected by AGNs and they cannot trace the star formation rates for strong AGNs. In this work, we present thoroughly studied to pH properties in strong and luminous AGNs based on a well-studied low redshift quasar sample. The spatial RIS probes global observations to these objects, and the rich data set from the literature also aid as derived independent star formation rates that will help evaluating the effectiveness of pH-based star formation rates. Moreover, the multiband wavelength observations that can help constrain the RSM content from SED feeding and the CO measurement. These parameters will help us investigate the physical process that can affect the pH strength in the strong AGN environment. Our study shows that quasars present diverse pH strengths in the meta infrared, including the stubborn like case and the towers dominated cases. After experimenting on the mock data that closely mimics, observ mimics observed spectrum, we constrain the HN diluting effect to pH measurement. And in our later analysis, we only include the pH strengths that are free of the HN diluting effect. One of the advantages in our study is that we adopted the total pH luminosity between 5 and 15 micron to calculate the star formation rate. The first major result is by comparing the pH star formation rate with star formation rate for neon and inferred luminosity. We find pH underestimate the star formation rate by about 0.5 dex when the star formation rate is higher than 50 solar mass per year. Since the star formation rate also correlated with the luminosity of quasars, these objects also, create some, also corresponded to quasars have volumetric luminosity higher than 10 to 46 argos per second. From our previous work, we already know that these bright quasars also have equivalent gas reservoir to compared to the normal star forming galaxies. Therefore, we concluded that the pH emissions in these objects are intrinsically weak and that the pH molecules are tended to be destroyed by the powerful quasar activities. With the pH ratios, the second result shows that the larger and more ionized the pH molecules dominate the quasar hosts. The 6.2 over 7.7 ratio indicates the pH molecules in quasar hosts possess twice more carbon atoms compared to the low luminosity HMs and the staphomines. At the fixed screen size, the 11.3 over 7.7 .7 ratio indicates quasars. They have the pH molecules with higher ionization fractions. Similarly, with the pH ratio, with the pH ratio between 11.3 and 17 micron, we find that the smaller pH grains 
in the quasar hosts are systematically suppressed compared to the non-luminosity AGNs and the subforms. The first analysis shows that both the ionization fraction and the green size distribution for pH molecules correlate with the quasar luminosities. The future DWST and large ground based RR telescope will provide more clues in this aspect by expanding the quasar luminosity range and resolving the pH ratio towards the nucleus. To summarize this talk, we studied the pH properties in numerous AGMs based on a lower redshift quasar sample. We find while pH emission can well trace the star formation in most objects, we find that they are intrinsically weak and tended to be destroyed in most powerful quasars. Secondly, pH ratios indicate that the larger and more ionized pH molecules dominate the quasar hosts at the lower redshift. We anticipate that data from JWST and large ground-based RR telescope in the future will directly zoom in the nuclei of local AGNs and provide conclusive observation to review the nature of PAHs. Thank you all for your attention to this talk. Welcome to contact me if you have any questions and comments to this presentation and also to this work. Thank you.